either can undergo auto-oxidation in the presence of light and in the presence of oxygen. So here is the structure of ether. In the presence of light and the radical source, it will abstract a hydrogen from the alpha carbon to form a carbon-centered radical. And this carbon-centered radical will then react with oxygen to form an oxygen-centered radical. The oxygen can exist in two resonance forms, which you can see here, the double bond form or the diradical form. But in most of the mechanisms, the diradical form is more preferable, and that's why you can see the oxygen-centered radical is formed. So after this, it can either react with an unreacted ether molecule to form a hydroperoxide, and also an unreacted, a new carbon-centered radical. Or it can combine with another oxygen-centered radical cell to form an organic peroxide. So the hydroperoxide can undergo two possibilities. So number one, it will eliminate a water molecule to form this molecule with double bond, oxygen. And in the presence of water, uh, which is a presence of the moist environment, it will then form the ethanol and also acetic acid. Or the hydroperoxide can eliminate a hydrogen peroxide instead to form a vinyl ethyl ether, which you can see a double bond carbon. And in the presence of water, we form a hemiacetal, and the hemiacetal will decompose to form acetaldehyde and the ethanol. After all, why must we so concerned? about the auto-oxidation of ether because of the formation of hydroperoxide. Because when the hydroperoxide is concentrated in a closed container, it will explode. So the storage condition of ether is very important.